Greetings, this is user Kanzar, and this video is about the latest version of Janus Charmo, which is version 1.4 that was recently released. In this video, I'm going to cover the new features and also some minor bug fixes in this version. So let's go ahead and get into the uh, most interesting new feature, and that happens to be an installer. So if you go to the Janus Charmo SourceForge webpage, which is sourceforge.net slash project slash um, you'll see on the download link it's the Janus Charmo hyphen 1.4 hyphen Linux hyphen x64 hyphen installer dot and run. If you are on a 64-bit Linux system then you can use this easy link. If you are on a 32-bit there is a 32-bit installer so click on browse all files click on 1.4 and then click on the Janus Charmo hyphen 1.4 hyphen Linux hyphen installer dot run. So that would be for 32-bit and this is for 64-bit. So since I already have it, I'm not going to download it. So once you have that file, it requires administration privileges to run and to show you that if I double click on it. Um, See, we have an error saying that you need to be root, so it doesn't work. So open up a terminal, uh, GNOME terminal or whatever terminal program you like to use, and navigate to where you downloaded it. I'm on the desktop, as you see. So I'm using Ubuntu, so I use the sudo and then the uh, installer file. So sudo, that long installer file type your password in and this is the setup so it says welcome to the Janus Jomo setup wizard click on forward this is the uh, license agreement which is the GPL uh, version 3 uh, you can choose to read through that and click on accept and then forward you can choose to put it anywhere you want. It initially installs as root and then changes to your user. So I like to put it in home, uh, my home directory under software. Click forward, and now it's ready to install. So click forward again. So there's a few things that this installer does. It creates a games group if it's not already created and adds your user to the games group. And this is important because the Nostromo hardware in Linux requires uh, special UDEV rules to grant privileges for applications to use uh, the, all of the, the hardware features on the Nostromo. So this does that, it creates UDEV rules, um, restarts the UDEV, so you should be able to uh, go ahead and start using the application straight away without having to reboot or anything. And you don't have to worry about UDEV rules, you don't have to worry about adding yourself to the games, it does all that for you. So go ahead and click finish, and it brings up a readme. And this just has all the information about how to, um, what's in the release and how to uninstall one if you want to do that. Please don't, but there is an uninstaller that you can choose to use. So hit OK. And now we're done. And what it did was it created a uh, desktop icon right here. So let's go ahead and launch James from version 1.4. And there it is. That is the latest version. So what I want to point out for the second set of features that I've implemented is these icons down here are actually clickable. So this brings up the about for the JMX Remo itself. And you can get to the about on that by right clicking on the system tray and clicking about, so it's the same. But if you click on Java, it describes Java, Linux, um, and then this install builder is the software I was using to create the installer. So 
Bitrock is an interesting company. They license out their install builder, but they support open source and free software projects. So they gave the JNSTromo a license to use for JNSTromo. So thank you very much to Bitrock and Install Builder. So far I've had pretty good success with uh, using it to build the installer. And they actually have cross-platform installers, so I could build eventually a Windows or OS X installer once I get the drivers working under that. So really cool product, easy to use. It's a graphical interface. You can do um, XML if, if you choose to do that for your installer, but I find the, the graphical interface to be uh, very easy to use and just suits my needs. So check out Install Builder if you are a software developer looking for uh, a good installer. Next is DB4O. It is an object-oriented database. JNSTromo uses DB4O to save your profiles. So it's it's a really awesome library that uh, uses object-oriented uh, style of NoSQL. Um, basically, it just makes it a lot easier to store uh, objects in the database instead of using the traditional relational database. So really awesome. Check it out. If you're a programmer, um, I recommend looking into DB4O and the companies we're signed. So the next feature that we'll talk about in JNSTromo version 1.4 is the printer-friendly PDF exporter. So click on the Manage Profiles, and you'll notice that there's an extra button here. Before it was just Save as PDF and Set Current Profile. So to see the difference between a printable PDF and the normal Save as PDF, we'll go ahead and click on the Diablo 3 profile, click on Save as PDF, Go to desktop and we'll set this one as graphical PDF. Open. And notice that uh, this would not be very good for printing because there's a lot of blacks, a lot of color variants. Um, it will use a lot of ink and toner. So instead, this is really cool to, to post on web pages and websites and share with your friends. But if you want to print it out, to hang it on your wall to remind yourself while you're in the game that you can just quickly look to the side to see what your current uh, setup is, then maybe print, printable PDF option is what you want. So again, click on the profile that you want to save as PDF, and then click on the printable PDF button and we'll call this Diablo 3 underscore printable. So it is I try to, to minimize as much of the blacks as possible. Uh, we use gray in a lot of areas like the button outlines, the text is like gray. I still use black for some of the key information, like the button numbers. So it's it's just a much cleaner, easier to print format than the other PDF. Please let me know what you think about this new printable format in the comments below. Also let me know what you think about the old PDF as well. Is there anything else that you could suggest that would be good for printing PDFs? So moving on to the next feature, which is uh, the profile name in the system tray has been added. So if you right click on the icon on the system tray, it displays the profile name. So right now we're using Diablo 3, so that's displayed here. If we switch it to say Starcraft 2, set that to current profile, right click, then it shows that we're using now Starcraft 2 profile. I'll just slip back. The reason this might be of importance is say you have the main GUI closed and currently we don't know what profile we're using if you don't remember. It's easy to just go to the system tray icon, right click, and you'll see Java 3. Uh, as you know, 
with the installer page there is 32-bit and 64-bit installer support. So there was a number of people asking for 32-bit support and I finally got that working in the drivers. So you not only have 32-bit support working but you have an installer for that as well. And finally there's just some minor bug fixes with the key map description. Uh, if I bring that back up I can show you real quick. So before this was editable and that was causing some problems with not having the key map description being saved. So in order to add to the key map description, click on the set key map description button and just enter in the text here and that will be saved properly. Other than that, uh, let's just go to the web page. We go to the main, just Janus normal web page. The uh, SourceForge page is the development page, and that's where you go to download um, the JNS terminal software. But this page is kind of for profiles and other information. And I added a few new links out of the navigation bar here to quickly get to areas that you might find interesting. Uh, I've added a link section. So th this is all the software and tools that I use to build JNS Trimo, if you're interested. So talked about Java, JNA, J input is the uh, lower level library that communicates directly with the game pads or in our case the Nistremo. DB4O install builder. NetBeans is an IDE I use to develop uh, Java applications and particularly this Java application is a GUI so there's a graphical interface for creating GUIs It's pretty good. Uh, there's a little bit of nuance, but once you get the hang of it, it's, it's pretty fast and it's fun to use. And then, of course, um, my build environment is Gooey Linux, and that's why we currently have a 32-bit and 64-bit version of Jigs Run. So, anyways, that's the, the web page. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope you download version 1.4. Your favorite like this video and you know spread the word about Jane Estrema. Thanks and happy gaming. Bye now.